You ain't driving, are you? I steer a little, but the ranger do most of the work. <laughs> this is my full fear of the center. How about you? I started the whole damn thing. Oh, oh. Yes, he was. He was. It, it was early in the process, and you, the way this works, you get together with the producers and the studio, and you get these names suggested, and and somebody brought up David Harbour, and it was we all just looked at each other and said, "Oh, oh yes, of course, he's absolutely perfect." Uh, it was one of those things where there was nobody was disagreeing or like, "What about this guy? What about that guy?" No, he was it. Thank God he liked the script. <laughs> we sent it to him, and I Skyped with him two days later, and he loved it, and he had the same ideas that we had, and the same approach to the character and the tone of the film. And yeah, he really created a unique and different Santa Claus, I feel like. First of all, he's just a great actor. Like, he's, he's a great actor, and he knew the nuances we had to hit with Santa and where he's at in the beginning, where he ends up in the end. But Santa also needs to have a big physical presence, uh, which David has. He has to be really funny and understand the kind of humor we were aiming for, which David knows. And he had to have a big heart, and, sh and because the beating heart of the movie is his relationship with Trudy and, and the little like the little girl, and how they kind of help each other, and he finds his faith again through her. And and uh, David knew all those things, and he knew how important that was, and that was the first thing he mentioned to me how important that is. And we were just in sync, and and yeah, he was just like all these things I mentioned. He he just has a great combination of all these things that made him perfect for it. We started out with, at the beginning of the movie, like, I guess the big question of the movie for me, starting to play this character, and I know it sounds a little silly to go this deep into it, but is like, who is this guy? Like, we all believe in this guy, and we all talk, or our kids do, we lie to them and tell them he exists, but like, who is this guy? It's some guy in a red suit who comes into your house, he's known as Saint Nick, he's known as Santa Claus, but like, who is he? And so I think what we started with was we started with this, almost the 20s or 30s, the Coca-Cola company created Santa Claus, who was like a guy with glasses and a white beard and a jolly belly and a whole, whole, whole laugh and drank Coca-Cola and delivered presents to kids. And then if you go back, you start to see like, there's Saint Nicholas, um, who is like the patron saint of uh, lost souls or something and Christian mythology. And then there's also, um, you know, different cultures have different versions of this character. And so we wanted to explore like who this guy was, who he might have been. So we start off with him as this saccharine version of himself that has sort of, you know, he's got the, the nice curly beard and the little glasses and he sort of hates what he's become. He's become this sort of, you know, um, this thing for greedy children to kind of consume like everything else in this world. And as he starts to investigate his life, his own unhappiness leads him back to what he was before and his sort of mythological origins. And this little girl sort of is in trouble and says to him, we don't need a big fat jolly guy who's gonna give us sweets and presents this year. We need a guy who can save our life, my life. We need a protector. We need a champion. We need a hero. And, uh, and so I think that enlivens him. And this cynicism sort of melts away. And we start to see that, oh, this guy had a purpose that was different than just delivering, you know, nice, you know, nice sweets to little boys and girls. That he was, he believed in naughty and nice as bigger ideas. And I think he wants to get back to that. And that's what gives him sort of renewed life. And so that whole arc was really fun to have this dark guy who was trapped in a version of himself that the world thought he was, to have that guy explode because some young people say, we want a champion was, was really fun. Oh, I love Christmas, man. I, I, I mean, I know it's a bit of a commercial holiday, but at the same time, it's such a great excuse to be together with family and for me to see my whole entire family at once and for us to joke and reminisce and, and celebrate the things that we love, which is, you know, a lot of Latin culture, you know. We dance, we put our music on, uh, cumbia, salsa, merengue. We have our great dishes, lechon, penil, maduros, you know, all, all the things that we like in Caribbean culture. And, uh, you know, it, it, I just love a, a chance to be, for my kids to be with my extended family. And, and for them to see, you know, how beautiful we are as a family. It's Christmas! We decided that you could have one gift. Early. 
That is a direct hotline to Santa Claus himself. I can talk to Santa. All right, revelers. Welcome to your worst Christmas ever. You have $300 million in your personal vault. That's what I want for Christmas. Santa, are you there? Daddy said you were very busy tonight. My name is Trudy Lightstone. Are you gonna help us, Santa? Yeah, Trudy. Santa? No, my nice list. Santa Claus is coming to town. These bad men? They're all on my naughty list. Naughty. That's naughty! And what do you do to the naughty ones? I give them a lump of coal. Where is it? I gotta watch. Ah! I believe in you, Santa. Come on. Which one of you did that, Prancer? So unprofessional.